What are going to be going over here is a retrospective accounting change in principle here for long-term contracts. And our example is going to be we're going to change from the completed contract method to the percentage of completion method. And what we have to do in this uh, change in accounting principle is that we're going to have to adjust our prior year's financial statements as if the new principle has always been used. So this is going to be our example here. I've got the numbers laid out here and just looking at the basic income statement here for income statements here for the completed contract versus the percentage of completion. And what we're going to do for this example, we're going to be looking at three years here, year X1, year X2, and year X3. And we're going to make our adjustments as of the end of year X3 here. But for our example here, this completed contract method, we're going to continue using the completed contract method here for tax accounting purposes, but we're going to change to the percentage of completion method here for the financial or book accounting purposes. So what I've got is the numbers laid out for each of these, uh, each, each uh, for our income here before taxes, our income tax, and also our net income for both the completed contract method here versus the percentage of completion method. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is uh, when we're making this change in a retroactive, retrospective here accounting change in principle here from the completed contract method to the percentage of completion method, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to determine the income difference here be between both of those methods. And then based on that income difference, we're going to have to determine what the tax effect is. And then we also have to know what the in income effect is uh, net of any tax here. So let's go look at what we're going to be doing here. So what we have to first do here is we're going to be looking at our completed contract here. And let's look at our income before taxes for a completed contract here for year X1. And let's say that's 400,000 here. Everything is in hundreds of thousands. Now, when we ch we're going to change the percentage of completion method here, uh, that's again for our book accounting purposes. And it's going to change here when we're using the percentage of completion for the first year here, our income before taxes is going to change from 400,000 up to 600,000 here. So what we have to do is we're going to be looking at the income difference here for each of these three years here. So you can see uh, for completed contract, we were sitting at income before tax at 400,000. Now with the percentage of completion here, uh, we're sitting at 600,000 here again for year X1. So we have an income difference of 200,000. So percentage of in, uh, completion, we're having a greater income here of 200,000. Now, if we look at it in terms of our taxes here, so also greater income here for the percentage of completion, we're going to have uh, greater taxes here uh, for the percentage of completion versus our completed contract. So for our income tax here, uh, say 40% of the 400,000, 160,000. Now if we go down and we compare that to our income tax here for the percentage of completion, 40% of 600,000 gives us 240,000. So for the percentage of completion, you see we have our book purposes here, we have a greater tax by the difference here, looking at 160,000 here for the completed contract, income tax for the percentage of completion, 240,000. So the tax effect here is 80,000. Or we could also look at it just by taking the 40% here of the income difference of 200,000 is going to give us 80,000. So that's going to be our tax effect again for year X1. Now, if we go down to our income effect net of tax, that's going to be a number that we have to look at. Simply taking the 80,000 here from the income difference of 200,000 gives us 120,000. Or we could also look at it in terms of the net income here between our completed contract, contract 240,000 versus our net income for the percentage of completion here of 360,000. So again, you're going to get 120,000. You can look at it in these terms, but it's when you're doing these problems here, just break it down here where you're looking at your income difference between the two methods here. And then knowing that income difference, you just take the tax, whatever tax you're paying on that income, you take that the tax that we call the tax effect here. And just the difference between your tax uh, that you're paying here versus the income difference here gives us your income effect here, net of any tax. Now we would do the same thing here for year X2 here in year X3, we could go through that. But what we want to look at here in those numbers, say just looking at year X2 here, our income tax, we had at 64,000 here, a 40% of the 160,000. And then for our percentage of completion, we have at 72,000. 
that would be 40% here of the 180,000. But what you see here for our completed contract method here, you can look right across the board here where you're going to have, you're going to be paying less income tax here because you're recognizing less income here versus your percentage of completion method where you're going to be paying greater income, uh, greater income tax because you recognizing greater income here. So what that is going to do is going to set up a deferred tax liability or a future taxable amount when you look when because we're using uh, the completed contract method here for our tax accounting purposes uh, and that you can always see here you're paying less taxes here because you're recognizing less income here under the completed contract method but it's going to reverse itself over time here uh, so what you have to do is again that tax effect that becomes a deferred tax liability or a future taxable amount okay so let's let's look at that here so then our income uh, effect net of any tax here you just make your comparison here for each of those years here you take your income difference less your tax effects is going to give your income effect net of tax and these are these are the three things you have to deal with here when you're having this retrospective accounting principle change that is you have to restate your financial statements and we're going to do it in just a cumulative amount here over these three years so you can see what you have to do is you have to just sum your income difference here over those three years here. And maybe we better go through this last year here, year X2 here, just so you see what's going on. So your income before tax, 190,000 here, at 40% of your income tax, 76,000. Your net income, 114,000. Simply to 190,000 less your income tax here, 76, gives us your 114,000. And then percentage of completion, same thing here. Your income before tax, 200,000, 40% tax, 80,000. And then the difference here gives you net income of 120,000. Again, just re look at your income tax here. Uh, completed contract here, 76,000 less than your income tax here. Percentage of completion here, 80,000. That's going to give you your, def in this case, the deferred tax liability of 4,000 here, because we're paying less taxes here uh, because we're using the completed contract for uh, com completed contract method here for tax purposes versus the book purposes here we're recognizing or using the percentage of completion method. Okay, so, okay, just figure out your income differences here uh, between completed contract and percentage of completion, and then determine what your tax effect is, and that's simply the tax rate here times the income difference, and then the difference between your income difference here and your tax effect is going to give your income effect net of any tax. Okay, so this is what we want to do here. So what we have to do to record this here, we have to go down and we have to set up these three accounts here. Our construction in process, that's going to be an inventory account. And this is just for our basic example here. This is all inclusive here. And that's going to be an asset account. And then we've got our deferred tax liability here that we set up because for the completed contract method, we're recognizing less tax than uh, than the percentage of completion method, which we're changing to. And then we're going to also have this retained earnings. That's going to be for our contract adjustment. Uh, that's going to be an equity account here, deferred tax a liability and a liability account. Okay, so uh, for our construction and process, we'll just take it right off our chart here. So that was the income difference here between the completed contract versus the percentage of completion method. So what we do, because we change to this percentage of completion method here, we have increased income here for each of those three years, year, year X1, year X2, and year X3. 200,000, 20,000, 10,000. So 230,000 income difference. We have an increase in income here for the percentage of completion of 230,000 over a completed contract here. So what we have to do is we have to increase our construction and process inventory for that income here. That's the income difference. So we would debit or increase our construction and process here by 230,000. Again, income difference between a completed contract versus our percentage of completion method here. Okay, then we move over here to our deferred tax liability. This is, and that, uh, remember the construction and process, that's a debit amount here. Our deferred tax liability and our re retained earnings are gonna be credit amounts here. So the balancing amount here be uh, be between our construction and process, our inventory asset account, again, goes to our deferred tax liability and our retained earnings. So deferred tax liability, that's really the tax effect here. That 
Uh, we're paying greater taxes here, percentage of completion, which we changed to over the completed contract that we're using for tax accounting purposes. So that has, sets up a deferred tax liability of, in this case, credit up here for 92,000. The 80,000 here in year X1, 8,000 in year X2, and 4,000 here in year X3. For a total here, credit of 92,000. And really what you're doing here is you're taking your prior year's tax expense, you have to recognize it here. Uh, for, and that's a future taxable amount. It's a temporary difference that's going to reverse itself. Again, because you're paying less, uh, you're rec for the tax purposes, you're paying less taxes versus the percentage of completion which you're using for book accounting that you have changed to. So you have to recognize this deferred tax liability. And then finally, uh, that was a credit here for 92,000. And then our retained earnings, that's just for the contract adjustment. And really what you're doing here is you're looking at your prior year's income. So what you're gonna do here, that was the $138,000. The extra income here that your net of any tax that you're recognizing uh, uh, for the percentage of completion here that you switched to versus your completed contract. So what you would do here, the income effect, Net of tax, 120,000 first year, 12,000 second year, 6,000 the third year. So that, what does that add up to? A credit for 138,000 goes to retained earnings. So what you're doing here, your prior year's income is closed to, uh, to retained earnings each year. So each of those years here, year X1, year X2, uh, those that income would have gone to the income statement and then it would have been transferred to retained earnings. So recognizing greater income here for when you change it over to a percentage of completion method, so you would credit it here for $138,000. Okay, so really what we, these are the three accounts that we had to do for this adjustment to the change in our accounting principle here. Again, construction and process, and that's because in this case, we just had the case here where the completed contract method, we were recognizing less income here for each of those years here versus the what we switched to for the percentage of completion method. So just remember, set up, in this case, we had those three accounts here. We had that asset account to our construction and process. We had to debit that here for the total income difference between the two methods here, and that was 230000 and then our credits gone to the deferred tax liability. That was really prior year's tax expense. We continued with the completed contract method, but for financial or book purposes, we switched over to percentage of completion method. So we paid more taxes on a percentage of completion method versus uh, what we recorded for our book purposes versus the completed contract method for tax purposes. So that's why we have to set up the deferred tax liability because uh, we really got a future taxable amount since we recognize less here for the completed contract. Okay, and then finally, the retained earnings, that was really the difference here, the income difference, and that was because we changing to percentage of completion method, we recognized greater income uh, over those three years here. So we had to make that adjustment here to increase our retained earnings. The income remain for each of those years gets close to the income statement. And then the income statement here gets close to retained earnings. So that's how we go about making our retrospective accounting change here in principle for long-term contracts. And we just lose, use the completed contract versus the percentage of completion. Okay, so that'll uh, summarize our topic.